working on putting this onto here and then putting that onto here so he ran away he's camera shy but he's gonna get this turbo installed for me and we're gonna put it on the dyno today and see what it'll do with the same setup as the stock turbo so we've got this ETS manifold we've got the ETS uh, J pipe there and then we've got the parent inlet and um, actually we're gonna swap out and put the ETS intake back on um, and do this test with the ETS intake first and the ETS top mount intercooler got the new turbo up in the hole and went and put the inlet on and noticed that there is now a step on the inside of the inlet. So the inlet is a little bit smaller than the opening on the turbo. The problem is there's that O-ring retainer. So if I grind a bunch of that out, we're gonna have an issue with the O-ring retention. So I'm just gonna try to radius it a little bit more on the inside, but there's not a lot that I can do, unfortunately. not perfect but it's better it's pretty much a knife edge on this side now which is as much as we can get without compromising the o-ring and since it's a mass airflow meter car it has to seal with that o-ring so it's as good as we can do should hopefully help just a hair and make a couple more power maybe if not it'll at least not prevent it from making more power down the road i had a little skip There we go, big choocher. Still just a tiny bit of a step there, but not bad, not bad, not bad. So we didn't change anything on the car other than the turbocharger. Left the stock, sorry, not stock, left the ETS top mount that we already had on there, went back to the ETS intake, it had the parent, but since in our test, the ETS did better, we wanted to do that one. So we have ETS intake, ETS intercooler, ETS charge pipe, and the full ETS turbo back exhaust with this new Blausch prototype turbo. So we're gonna see what this turbo does on the car compared to the stock turbo on 92 octane fuel. We're not doing an E30 tune or an octanium tune today, maybe in the future, but we'll probably be switching to a front mount before that happens. Uh, we debated doing the front mount today because we have it, but decided we wanted to, to leave it on the top mount for better apples to apples comparison, where we're only changing one variable as we move forward with this project. So, enjoy. Went ahead and pulled up the graph from where we left off with the ETS intake stage two car, 325 horse and 372 torque. And this is the, the off the shelf tune. So we could get a little spicier, which we probably are today, but I am gonna leave the torque hopefully under 400 foot pounds. I'm just, I've decided that that's the cap that I'm comfortable with on this car at the moment. Um, stock clutch, stock gearbox, all of those things. So 400 foot-pounds is definitely a ton. It's a ton of torque, way more torque than realistically even we need. I might even, because we're, we're on pump gas here, I might try to cap it at 380, but we'll see what it does out the top. So I'm not trying to make torque. I've seen some, some dynos posted recently where guys were posting like 430, 440 foot-pounds on pump gas. Cool. Um, yeah, you can do that, but I, I'm not going to. So it's, uh, it's definitely not something that is a is a battle for torque this engine will just make torque until you decide that that's as much as you want to do so that's not what we're after we're not after crazy torque but we're gonna turn it up and see what we can make out the top end i'm hoping it'd be really cool if we could get like a 380 and then like 380. i think that'd be a good square um, power for pump gas we'll see if we can get there 
always update your access port. I hate seeing people say, don't update, don't update. Just update the dang thing. You're not gonna lose any features. You're only going to gain features and the thing you might lose is bugs. So keep it up to date. So while that access port's updating, we're gonna come in here to the boost tables and our boost targets. And just like in other videos, we're gonna take those boost targets and we're gonna drop them down to a much lower number. We're gonna to go to 10 pounds here. And that's going to hopefully allow us to just start with a nice easy pull, see what the turbo can do for minimum boost and start building our wastegate position table, just like in previous videos. Uh, I'm not gonna really go into that part of the tune, uh, just because this is more of a video for comparison of, of power differences, not how to tune your boost target. A little test to know if you installed things right. When you start up your car, if before you put parts on it, you had good fuel trims, and then you install parts, you should still have pretty good fuel trims. So we're around 2% or less, that's really good. So you know that things are probably put on right. You probably don't have any big air leaks. Um, it's always a good idea to smoke test the car, but if you don't have a smoke machine at home, that's a good check right there. Tune review, first pull. It'll probably be a pretty low number because we're only set to 10 pounds and it's also the first pull and these cars always put down a really low number on the very first pull. Everything's cold, the gearbox is cold, the axles are cold, the tires are cold, even the dyno is cold. So your first pull is always just gonna be lower numbers. In fact, right now, because this car has sticky tires, it's really bouncy because just from sitting, the tires have flat spots in them. Here we go. wasn't going to learn anything more from the pole, so why keep pulling? Um, it was able to hold 10 pounds. It actually held a little bit less. So we're going to make sure we didn't get any codes for wastegate position or anything weird like that, which is kind of a common thing with these aftermarket turbos if your wastegate zero position isn't set. Uh, Cosmic Motorsports has a video on how to set that if you get a code for it. Uh, go through their procedure and it, it'll, it'll work good for you. But... We're going to go ahead and take a look at the log, make sure everything's good, and then give it about four more pounds of boost and start really building the wastegate position now. So a quick check, we want to look at our fuel trims and we're still, we're really, really small fuel trim there. So less than a percent, um, even as we come out here, we're still at less than a percent of combined. We're adding about 2% up top. So I think everything is good from a uh, fuel trim perspective. Um, we didn't have any knock, feedback knock, anything on that run. So I, I believe everything looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it our wastegate position. Uh, was pretty far open. We were at about 10 millimeters the whole way. So we can go into that wastegate position map and do that for 10 pounds. Um, let's see, we still want it to spool. Oh yeah, let's look at when that turbo spooled here. Since everybody wants to know when this thing spools, and this is just an initial, um, I haven't done anything cool to help it spool, as it were. So let's just pull this open here. And uh, we were in boost. I don't, you know, I don't have a boost uh, tap on this car, but you can see we were in boost by 2,800 RPMs. We were already to what our peak torque for that pole was. So. That tells you anything. Let's see, stage two, ETS intake, final run there. So you can see, I got to start the run a little sooner for sure. Um, and this was obviously a lot more boost on the ETS run, but I think we're gonna come up pretty much the same would be my guess. We'll find out here as we raise the boost. So let's go ahead and give us 14 pounds and just
to see where we end up here at 14 pounds of boost and our initial um, like I said at 10 pounds we were at about 10 millimeters I didn't rev out very far but we'll give this about 10 I think oh we were at less we were at four so 4.5 sorry 3.8 tapering up to 8.9 by 4800 actually we're pretty close yeah I mean it's pretty close um, we're not gonna make any changes out further we're just gonna let the boost controller do its thing and then find out what the difference is on these maps and build it from that so that's how it's gonna work and that's the process we're gonna go through until we have a boost curve dialed in pretty flat at about 16 pounds and then I'm gonna kind of change it up a little bit and once I have a good flat boost curve at 16 pounds I'm actually gonna do some wastegate or sorry not some wastegate I'm gonna do some uh, cam timing tuning and get the cams dialed in for this new turbo because when you do a bigger turbo, one thing that you'll definitely find is that your cam overlaps aren't going to be the same. Back pressure is different and front pressure, pressure ratio is different. And so the cam overlap definitely can change and usually pick up power. So we're going to go ahead and flash this map and get her up to 14 pounds and then we'll build it up to 16 and then we'll do some cam overlaps and then I'll show you where we're at before we really turn the boost up. So we're still early in the tuning process. This was a 16 pound pull and you can see past about 5800 we're climbing whereas I had to just let off before because it wasn't making power. Um, spool up is really really close to the same. We're down a hair on power below 3000 but this was all, I, I want to say this was 19 pounds here and we're only at 16 so we're looking good this should be really good cam timing updates that's 13 horsepower right there just from changing cam timing at this 16 pounds so it picked up a lot of mid-range so now we can use all of the boost to the maximum potential so now let's see what this car does at 18 and then at 20 pounds which is probably where we're going to stop on pump gas we might actually stop at 18 if we hit our target we'll see tuner view 18 pounds we were at 326 horse and 347 foot pounds at 16 that's pretty good. I, I think that's a good number on 92 octane, not 93 or anything fancy. over at the top a little bit. I gotta see what that's about. Oh, looks like my timing map because the OTS maps, I have some safeties built in in case the car's over boost um, by design. And if it went over the 16 pounds that it was targeting at higher RPMs, it was pulling a bunch of timing out. And because I started with that OTS map, I actually have like no ignition timing at high RPM, which is kind of cool to see the safeties in motion or in action. Um, pull up the, the graph here. So here was our Blausch run at 18 pounds, 375 foot pounds, 340 horse. And this up here is what I was talking about where it actually takes a bunch of timing out of the pole. Um, 
in order to, in case you do overboost on the, the OTS maps, it's not going to run as much timing because we, we don't want it to, because we don't want the car to overboost. So anyway, that's kind of cool that it did that. Let's pull back up my ETS Stage 2 comparison here, which was also actually was about 19 pounds. So all we're losing for spool up is there, and we were running a pound more boost and... Well, here's the final here. I was hoping for a little more out the top, but 359 tor or 359 horsepower and 383 torque. And just like I said before, torque is really just whatever I want it to be. Um, it could be more, it could be less, but I was trying to cap it around 380. So feeling pretty good. Um, pulls out pretty smooth up top. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of the jerkiness that you see on the smaller turbos trying to make power up top. Let's pull up the ETS run. God, I have too many runs on this car. So here was the ETS run. You can see I'm running the same boost down low. Look at this. This is a larger turbo and the spool is identical. The power delivery at lower RPM is exactly the same. So you don't lose anything switching to this turbo and you just gain power out the top. So past about 4200, we're just breathing better. And so it's just gonna make more power up top. So, you know, right, right up here, that's, uh, let's see, 354 minus 315, that's 40 more horsepower up past 6,000. So pretty good. Um, like I had said, this is a pump gas 92 octane tune. We left the top mount, didn't switch to the front mount for this tune and it seemed to like it it seemed to do okay uh, i stopped at 19 pounds i didn't try to run more boost than that it would have but again pump gas um and you know i just don't don't feel like hurting this car let's just for for giggles and squirts let's see what we have for our uncorrected power today yeah uh, 364 so pretty dang good on the uncorrected number um an uncorrected number for people that have tuned in before and I've talked about. This is actually the numbers that the car is making right now. So 364 horse and 391 torque. So pretty good. Uh, correction factor is not the greatest today. Sometimes we have even higher correction factors than that uh, because the, the air density is often really high, but it looks like the air density today is not so high, probably a low barrow or something, but yeah, looks pretty good. I'm excited to see how it drives. And the next test, we're going to get rid of this top mount. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but we have the front mount intercooler for the car. So we're going to put that on and we'll leave everything else the same with the same turbo and the same intake and everything. And we'll see what it does. We may do an octane booster tune before that. I'm not sure I have to go talk to the powers that be and see what they want me to spend my time on. But like I said, I like it.